I'm Matt Ryan, and you're listening to Chris Gordon's Ramblings with Hellblazer. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, Hellblazers, wherever you are in the world right now. This is the one and only Ramblings of a Hellblazer with your host, as always, Chris Gordon, bringing you the stars we love to watch. Today's guest has been a long time coming, and one whose return appearance has been requested for so, so long. I met him again at Wales Comic Con the other week, and proud to say right off the bat of me saying hello, he knew me, and he said straight away, Chris, man, we need to do a podcast. So here it is. Listeners, Hellblazers, fans. I'm not going to prolong your torment any longer, although I'm sure that would be amusing for the character played by today's guest. Without further ado, I bring to you... John Constantine himself, Mr. Matt Ryan. So good evening, Matt. How are you? I'm great, Chris. How are you doing, man? I'm fantastic, thank you. Again, thank you on behalf of everybody for joining me today. No problem, man. It's a real pleasure, a real pleasure. Awesome. So as you know, I've got a whole load of questions. I normally uh, go through my own stuff at the beginning and sort of rattle it off, but we've had so many yeah. questions and so much love pouring for you. Uh, oh, oh, well, that's good. That's <laughs> we'll good. Just good to love. Thank you, guys. I've got to say, the Twitter, uh, I, I think I mentioned it last, the last time, the Twitter is now at 15,000 impressions. That's how many people have seen 15, it. 15,000 impressions? Yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy, man. That's and, awesome. And over 1,300 interactions. So hopefully, yeah, we'll get as many plays. <laughs> Ooh, great, great. Awesome. Cool, so I'll, we'll kick straight in. I've got, I've separated them out. I've got general questions. I've got Constantine questions. Yeah. Um, which obviously uh, there was a lot of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we've got Teresa Khan, and we'll go on to your latest current project as well, which oh, is the okay. Felicium, which we can mm-hmm. never pronounce correctly. And that, so, the Halcyon. That's the Halcyon. Halcyon. I know, that's it's, the a, it's a little bit of a funny one. I was like that when I, uh, when I first looked at the word, you know, but uh, yeah, it's called the Halcyon. Yeah. I had that right last week, but I've been sitting there and pondering it all week, and I knew You've I'd get it wrong. it right, yeah, go on. <laughs> Awesome. Cool. So we'll kick straight in with general questions from Amber Surratt. What's the Amber. most? Yeah. What? Oh, sorry. Go on, say hello to Amber. No, I say hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. What was the most defining moment for you as an actor? What has been the most defining moment for you as an actor? The most defining, um, <clears throat> I think it was probably uh, when I was in the Royal Shakespeare Company. Uh, I left drama school, and uh, my first theatre job was playing a lead role at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and that was uh, such a huge undertaking and kind of a baptism of fire in a way, but also such a, a great and wonderful experience and I, I think that what happened was is the pl- uh, we were doing a season of plays called the Spanish Golden Age plays which mm-hmm. were um, plays from Spain written around about Shakespeare's time okay and uh, yeah and uh, and this one player had you know it didn't have the most amazing reviews you know it wasn't a, a, a huge kind of commercial success although people really loved the play and um, and it was a real kind of uh, a growing experience for me and I think that uh you know, to go out there every night and carry that show. I think we did it for over eight months in, in repertory theatre with a bunch of other shows. And, and that was definitely a defining thing for me, you know, taking on that kind of responsibility and it kind of set me up for, for you know, um, the, the roles I've, I've been lucky enough to go on and, and play, really, you know, and mm-hmm. Constantine included. Awesome. Well, it does. I guess that's, you know, it's a great sort of way to start things, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was amazing, man. Excellent. And was also saying that, you know, she's noticed you worked in Small Change, a play with Luke Evans. So, I mean, she's a huge yeah. Luke Evans fan as well. She'd just like to know what was that like with a working, oh, was it fun great. working with him, fellow Welshman? Yeah, yeah man. Luke's, Luke's awesome. He's, he's great. He's a great actor and he's, a, he's an awesome guy. And, uh, yeah, it was a four-hander play at the Donmar Warehouse directed by Peter Gill and, and the lovely uh, Sue Johnson was in it as well. And, and we had a great time on that, on that job. You know, we were both, both playing Welshmen and we were both Welshmen and, uh, yeah, it was a it was a it was a really great, fantastic experience, and uh, and he's just such an awesome guy and a great actor. Awesome, I know Sue Johnson as well. Um, she is the one from Brookside, isn't she? And um, the Royal Family. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's great. Very great actress. Yeah, sadly, Luke turned me down for my interview. <laughs> oh, he did. He did. Yes. Oh, uh, so well. I know. Oh. Well, his publicist did, should I say? 
<laughs> right. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> He's probably very, very busy. He is. Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, one of those things. <laughs> I just thought mm-hmm. I'd drop that in. <laughs> <laughs> Amber's also the last one from Amber is what actors inspired you in your own career? Well, actually, um, I must say, growing up, I used to watch a lot of Pacino and De Niro movies, and uh, and Al Pacino, I think, was, was such a big kind of influence. Uh, I loved all of his films, and uh, and I had the chance, I was lucky enough to have the chance to meet him, actually, uh, in New York last year when he was doing a play on Broadway, and, and I was awesome. doing a tour as we can on Broadway, and uh, a friend of mine, um, a friend of mine in John Doe's, actually, mm-hmm. uh, knows knows him and we wow. uh, we got to go backstage and uh and meet him and it was just uh you know um, uh, an amazing experience to meet uh meet such an amazing actor and he was fantastic in his play as well so yeah well wow, that's uh that is an achievement to uh to say if you're a lifelong fan of his so actually go and meet him as well and see him in broadway which is a much yeah. more intimate yeah. type of set in theater isn't it yeah to see him on stage as well you know it's just it's unbelievable you know he's uh such an amazing theatre actor as well, and uh, yeah, he's uh, it, was, it was a great it was a great thing great thing to see. Yeah, definitely. I've actually just seen it. it was today. Scorsese's just um, got an approval for a new. I think it's either a new series or a new film for Netflix or something with Robert De Niro, Pacino. Um, no. Yeah, and basically, oh, I can't remember the names. Harvey Keitel oh, well, and no, all that. Lot, Joe Pesci. Yeah, Joe Pesci, De Niro. Um, yeah, Al Pacino and uh, Harvey Keitel. So he's just got the go-ahead for that. That's going to be awesome. Wow. Well, when um, as soon as I put the phone down to you, I'm looking that up. <laughs> yeah, I think it was on Facebook. I saw I saw a link earlier. So uh, yeah, that'll be yeah. That's going to be brilliant to see. Yeah, great. <laughs> cool. Okay, so moving on. Claire Hemsworth. Um, she met you at Comic Con Wales Comic Con a couple of weeks ago. She's oh, also an Armistice Army. She's known as. Um, she oh, runs... Armistice Army. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, she runs I, a blog I, I for you. Claire, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Lovely girl. Thanks for all your support, love. <laughs> cool. Do you know anything about the release for 500 Miles North? Um, I don't at the moment, to be honest. There's no news there. It's still in the works. I'm um, still being finished, finished off. Well, I think what happens generally um, with a lot of uh, low-budget films or films you put together yourself, you know, uh, they do sometimes take longer than mm-hmm. than, uh, uh, than commercial releases and... and um, and, and that is the case with us anyway, but I'm really looking forward to uh, it, it coming out. I saw um, a cut of it not so long ago, and it was looking good, and uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to it coming out. I'll let you know. Awesome. You don't know anything. awesome, awesome. That's great. Thank you. Okay, Angel Kitty. Uh, I always think Angel of, Kitty. Yeah, I know, it's a cracking name, isn't it? I always think... Prr, 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 prr. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What's you, the, what movie would you watch to uplift you? You uplift your spirits. <laughs> To uplift my spirits, you know, um, how to train a dragon. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. a, that's a classic. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many times I've watched that with my son. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah. used to watch, I used to watch it with, uh, with my, my ex-girlfriend when you watch it a few times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, you know, it was, it was pretty, pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. are. I've got to say, yeah. All these animations coming out lately, you know. Um, I've got to make yeah. sure. I've got an excuse for the nine-year-old, but damn, I want to. I don't mind watching them at all. I know, right? <laughs> I bet that, you know, but I and I don't know have kids yet, but uh, I bet that's what's great. But when you have kids, you get to, you know, watch all those. Uh, you have an excuse to watch all those uh, great animations that, 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 that oh, you yeah. want. And go to the cinema to do so as well. <laughs> mm, yeah, cool. Have you seen the new Jungle Book movie? Yes. How cool is that? I haven't seen it. Oh, man. haven't it's really you? Good. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, you go and watch it, Matt. Really. Um, yeah. It's so so well done. They've got. Uh, um, <laughs> I mean, you know the characters. You know the, who the actors are. Like Christopher Walken plays um, Louis King Louis. Oh no way! Yeah, um, I won't spoil it. But there's. There's things that you'd expect. With, I'm not going to try and spoil it for anyone. But there's things where you'd think from the traditional. If the ways of musical, tra- they've transpired a little bit into the new film. So if you can picture Christopher oh, wow. Walken and King Louis Man. and sing, so, I love yeah. Christopher Walken. He's another one who was uh, like a big influence as well. You know, just uh, oh, yeah. has such a unique rhythm and uh, he's amazing. But no, I look forward to seeing the movie. My brother saw it and he said the way they did the music and everything was uh, was great. You know, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll get to see. It. Hopefully, I get to catch it in the cinema. I'm not too busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and go and see it in the cinema. It's it's it's, it's, it's yeah, it's not too childish, and it's but it's, it's got grown up bits. Yeah, very very good. Obviously, Sir Ben Kingsley in there, brilliant film, mm-hmm. brilliant film. Uh, cool. yeah. uh, another last one from Angel. Funniest and scariest movie that you've ever seen? 
funniest and scariest movie. Uh, scariest movie lately, I mean, uh, was probably The Conjuring. I, I was mm-hmm. watching a lot of uh, um, those kinds of movies uh, when I was doing Constantine. Yeah. You know, just uh, doing my research, uh, <laughs> watching all those kinds of movies all the time. And, uh, yeah, so I, I, The Conjuring was really good. Really, really good. They really uh, did a good job on that. So I would say The Conjuring was probably the scariest. Mm-hmm. The funniest, uh, that's a tricky one. Um, <laughs> a funny movie. You know what? Uh, I really nothing comes to mind right now. Nothing comes to mind. I haven't watched a good good comedy for a while, actually. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna have to pass on that. That's that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't name. There's so many f- different movies I've watched lately. Anyway, to yeah, you know, I couldn't comment on what fully one to watch either. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah. Kim Beecham, she also met you at Wales Comic Con, another lovely girl. Hey, Kim. <laughs> Did you enjoy your time at Wales Comic Con, and do you have any other conventions planned for the future? Oh, I loved it. I, yeah, I loved it in, uh, in Wales. It was great to, uh, to be back again and to see that it's grown, you know, from mm-hmm. it being on one day to being two days. And and uh, a bunch of people that I met last year I saw again, so it's always great to get together with people and the people are lovely and it's in Wales and I really enjoyed kind of the drive up there as well. It was really cool and, yep. you know, drive, driving into the country and stuff was lovely. Uh, and, um, yeah, I'd love to do it again. I don't have any comic cons lined up at the moment. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm working, um, uh, uh, we work Sundays on this, on this new TV show I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, so unfortunately that, that rules out uh, some comic cons, but hopefully when I finish, I'll do a couple. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, Wales comic con is one of the most special ones. I, I mean, I used to, I know because of where you're from uh, in South Wales. I used to go to university in Lampeter. Oh right, yeah. Cool. So I used to be Swansea and Cardiff quite a lot driving down. It's, it's got one of these beautiful countrysides ever to drive through. Yeah, oh man, I was I was I was down um, yeah, back in Wales to see my parents. Drove yeah. all around the course of the Gow. It was just beautiful scenery, and uh, I love it down there. You know, it's home. Oh, it is. Yeah, the Gow is gorgeous. <laughs> mm. Excellent. Um, yeah, I mean, there's another actually. You say, especially you say with the expansion. I mean, we've got another Comic Con in Wales. I think November because he normally does the Can two. He? Yeah, he does the two, he does the two. Um, yeah. Each year, but it's, it's, the other, it's the same place and another two day. Oh wow! Uh, November. Oh god, I've forgotten the dates. The first or second weekend in November. I think it's the second. Oh right. But yeah, we've got some. Well, I'll, look, I'll have finished that. I'll see if he gives me a call. Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll I'll give him a nudge. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll be soon. Then. Cool. Yeah, excellent. Be good to see you again. Yeah, you too. Yeah, and, uh, I've got to say as well, sorry, thank you as well, because I mean, when I, when I bumped into you I was in the queue for Xander, and you don't know how much it meant just to say, "Hey, Matt," and you were like immediately, "Chris, we got." You, you knew who I was. You knew who everyone was. People you'd met before. Um, all the fans have been buzzing about that. So. <laughs> oh, bless them, yeah. No, it's cool, man. You know, like people people spend their time to come out and see you. You know, and it's uh, it's good to you know show your appreciation to to everyone. You know, for. So you know them, them kind of all, all the support they get. It's it's a great thing. So I really I really enjoy interacting with people and kind of you know meeting them and stuff. It's a real it's a real pleasure. Awesome. And I say the the, the, the forums and stuff from Comic Con were absolutely filled with uh, positive positive vibes after meeting you. Saying if you knew, were they? Yeah, yeah. So, oh. so you know oh, this great. is an ego boost for you here, Matt. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so the Hellblazer DJ, who is also known as Tracy. Yeah. She, she's, Hi, Tracy. What's the first ever CD you bought, if oh, you can wow. remember? And she's got a two-parter, because the second part's whether you play an instrument or not. So we'll go in the first part. Okay, so um, the first ever CD I bought, oh, man, it's going to be something really embarrassing, because, like, it was, <laughs> you know, in the late late 80s, well, no, I think it was in, it was in the 90s, uh, yeah, you're younger than I me, think, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like a vanilla ice or something like that. You know, I don't know. I think it was. Uh, yeah. Oh no, actually, there used to be this this really small record shop um, yeah, on the high street in Gosinum where I grew up called mm-hmm. Sullivan's Records. Yeah. And me and my brother used to go down there, and it was kind of like they had records and tapes. You know, and I can remember like having a Walkman and going to Sullivan's and like buying <laughs> uh, uh, music. And I can remember like. Uh, I, I think the first actually uh, cassette I bought was like a heavy metal. Um, I think it was Metallica or something. Because and, and I, the, the reason I bought it was purely just because I liked the look of the cover. I didn't even I have no idea what what kind of style of music it was. I just liked the look of the cover. Yeah. And uh, and I can remember I bought it and uh, I really liked it. 
Um, <laughs> and then, uh, what was the other question? Uh, do you play an instrument? Which... I, I do, yeah. Well, I, I try. I play an instrument very badly. I, <laughs> I play uh, I play a little bit of a guitar and uh, and uh, kind of tinker around a little bit on the, on the, on the keyboard or the piano. But I'm, I'm not that, I'm not uh, very skilled, I, I should say, but uh, I like to have a, a jam. Cool, nice one. I'm actually thinking, you just reminded me talking about CDs. My first one was uh, Della Soul. De La, oh, Della Soul. Della yeah, Soul I remember three that. is a magic number. Oh, yeah. God, that's, that's how old I am. And, and Bruce Springsteen, Human Touch was the second album. Oh, Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> Love Bruce. Poor thing. Yeah. I mean, you can't knock me for Bruce Springsteen. It just shows my age when it first came out, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 16. Cool. <laughs> Wendy Willison is asking. Hi, Wendy. If you were to be on Doctor Who, would you prefer to be the Doctor or a companion? Or someone evil, perhaps, like an evil Time Lord or anything like that? Um, I would like to be an evil Time Lord or something something like that, yeah. Cool. Definitely. The really good fun. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Seems to be a bit more fun playing the bad guy. That seems to be sort of a <laughs> theme coming across from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. So Phoebe Nee... I hope I've pronounced that right, Phoebe. They're from China. She, there's a whole load of uh, fans from China. And if you oh, bear wow, with me, I've just, Hi, I've just completely forgotten the name of someone else. So bear with me a second. As my f uh, note's frozen. So I do apologise, but if you say hello to all your Chinese fans, because I just want to oh, say... Big, oh, big shout out to China. <laughs> awesome. She would like to know, could you please tell us if you will come to China? Well, um, yeah, I'd love to come to China. Who's, who's, who's buying the ticket? <laughs> yeah, no, that's no, the biggest I, I problem. I've China actually. Um, uh, uh, for a long time, I've I've wanted to kind of visit like uh, the, the the rice paddies and stuff, you know, and uh, and go and see the Great Wall and and uh, yeah, yeah, I would love I would love to. I'm really appreciative to all, the, all those fans in China. It's amazing that kind of the you know the show. I'm presuming Constantine has uh, has, has reached that far, and it's uh, yeah, it's great. Thank you, guys. No worries. Sherry J was the other person. Who's the other one who just what she did Sherry with the question? She just wanted to say hello to her because she's out in China and so hello, everyone Sherry knows that's a good, that's a great that's a great name, Sherry J. Cool. It is, isn't it? It's also there's some fantastic Twitter names. They really are. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Phoebe's second question was Team Captain America or Team Iron Man? Almost uh, forgot there. Um, I would be uh, well, Team Iron Man. Captain America's a little bit too straight for me, you know. Yeah. Uh, like. Like Iron Man's got a little bit more edge, although I haven't seen any movies, so I don't know what goes down. But uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd be Team Iron Man. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, uh, say so there's a there's a huge divide across people because obviously with both opinions going. So that's <laughs> in the Marvel oh, well. universe. Apparently, uh, I'm not in part of it. Uh, that's it's too too involved for me to get in. <laughs> yeah. But it's there. Okay, Autumn Wolf. Rachel is she's asking. Um, an in-depth question of, as actors, you get a lot of fan attention, tweets, tags, and show art directed at you. Since this is an unavoidable aspect of Twitter, do you have a preference to what fans send you, or do you just take it all in? I kind of um, just take it all in as I go, really. I mean, um, I, I don't really feel that, like, I, I get that much kind of um, uh, attention or anything. You know, mm -hmm. I kind of live a, a, a normal life, and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's... It's it's cool. I do really appreciate it when you know uh, I go to a comic con or something, or you know I hear from you know yourself or people that you know fans do really appreciate. It. It's it's great. But I'm, I I I was new to it. Yeah. when I got on Constantine, and um, and it's a cool thing to be on. And I can imagine like I can I've seen with some people how. Uh, it can be detrimental as well, you know. You, if if someone doesn't like what you're doing, then you know some people give a lot of bad comments and stuff, and that's slightly scary about all that, you know, <laughs> the social media events and uh, uh, social media kind of platforms and stuff. But um, so far, I've been very lucky with the kind of response I've had from people and uh, the interaction I've had, and yeah, I just take it all in as it comes. Fair enough. Fair enough. Great answer. Thank you. Blaze Broadway is asking, "What is your lifetime?" Blaze Broadway. Yeah, Blaze Broadway. It's her real name, apparently, as well. Blaze. Oh wow, that's How... awesome! Yeah, that is fantastic. Broadway is a synonym. Well, I don't know about Broadway, but I know Blaze was. <laughs> Blaze. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the cool. Blaze part. That's, that's cool. Isn't it? <laughs> What's your What is your lifetime aspiration? Uh, my lifetime aspiration. I don't know. I just try to live life kind of every day as it comes, you know, and. Uh, 
you know, uh, I have goals and uh, I try to achieve them and then uh, just try to kind of in- enjoy what comes my way and I feel grateful for what comes my way in life and friends and relationships and all that sort of stuff. And I just try to kind of be in the moment and, uh, and uh, yeah, just try to kind of okay. be in the moment, really. <laughs> cool. Fair enough. She's also asking, any plans to visit Australia for comic cons or pop culture events? Again, I guess it's who's paying. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, no, I, I <laughs> would love to go to Australia. Well. Yeah. I, I, I've actually got um, a relative in Australia. My mum's uh, auntie oh, lives right. in, in Australia. And uh, I've tried to uh, go over there uh, a few times, but just I, I just haven't had the time or I've been busy or... You know what I've <coughs> excuse me, Chris. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd lo- I'd love to go and visit, you know, and uh, and explore our country. Cool, no worries, no worries. Rebecca Clayton, have you ever considered auditioning for Black Sails? That's that pirate thing on Amazon. Um, I haven't. No, I haven't. Okay. I think that uh, <laughs> I think that I think that Neil Marshall, the director of uh, the, the Constantine pilot and episode two, the guy kind of like set set it up. Um, made director he I think he directed it an episode mm-hmm. of it or something but oh, okay. I, I don't really know that much I don't really know that much about it well yeah I guess I mean you've been so busy you don't really get to check out a lot of stuff that comes on yeah it's a shame man. yeah no problem Anne-Marie um, Folkto she's known as on Twitter Folkto Folkto yep is oh, what Folkto Folkto yes Folkto oh, interesting <laughs> yep. yeah. what is the one thing you won't tolerate if there's anything you won't tolerate, I mean, you, you know, you seem to be quite a tolerant person. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I just feel like um, there's, I've never really thought, thought of it like that. I think what I have a very low tolerance for is, is just people kind of uh, uh, being mean to people for no other reason, mm-hmm. for, no, for no reason at all, you know. But um, I, I don't really uh, get on with those kinds of people. I think that you should treat everyone equally with respect and love, and people who don't are... Uh, you know, I kind of have a no tolerance for. Yeah, that, good answer. It's a very good philosophy to have. I mean, I think on online world as well, you do get a lot of that. Um, people sit behind the keyboards and seem to be warriors. Um, yeah. you, can, you know, it can get nasty, but like you say, it's like you, tr- you know, put some positivity out there and yeah it's low tolerance levels for people yeah yeah, yeah totally with you i can't i can't put it into words for now <laughs> my mind's gone right? <laughs> i'll just agree with you <laughs> agree so yeah 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 cool so flaro flaro so uh, what was it like to work you've got two questions they're kind of two different people what was it like to work with Stephen amel on arrow and obviously angelica on constantine Oh well, um, working on Constantine Van Helga was just uh, you know uh, such a joy. You know everybody, the whole cast, the whole crew, the producers, everybody involved. You know the studio were just like oh, all amazing. It was it was uh, like an experience I've never uh, encountered before. Mm-hmm. Um, really became a family, and and Angie is uh, was was amazing. You know uh, to have uh, someone who, to to laugh and, and and you know you're down in the in the dirt really. You know working so so hard together and uh, for so many long hours of the day yeah. uh, and she, she's really has got a great sense of humour and uh, you know kept, kept people kind of upbeat on set and uh, she was a real joy to work with and she always she always brought the game as well you know she was always uh, on it and kind of ready to work and and, uh, and dance and uh, yeah she's awesome and working on Arrow was just a, a great experience it was great to put the coat on again as John and um, and Stephen was great. You know, he's a real leader. He's uh, he's he's uh, just great in that role. And uh, and and I really really enjoyed working with him. We had some good chats, and, uh, and he's a fantastic guy. Awesome, excellent. I know Bell Gaudro as well. I'll just name Bell because um, she'd asked a very similar question about working on Arrow. Um, so obviously I know we answered that there, but I forgot to name her. So okay, <laughs> sorry. <I'm fine. laughs> okay, the next question is from L, who is. Uh, well, her name is H, the Twitter name is H dash L Blazer, so you kind of got Hell Blazer. Oh, Hell Blazer! Pretty, pretty cool name. So she says she hears you're trading in that lovely Welsh accent for an American one. Is there any chance of a snippet of the American accent? Something that could oh. make L's heart flutter? Oh well, um, as much as I'd love to make your heart flutter, you're gonna have to wait until the show comes out, which is probably next year, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I am doing an American accent for this. Uh, for this role, and we have had a great guy like Coach uh, been working with, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's cool. But um, and that uh, unfortunately, you're not going to get to hear it until it comes out. 
<laughs> which will make you which will make you tune in, you know. That's, well, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are going to be waiting in anticipation. Excellent. I saw uh, Tim Curry's in anticipation. Rocky Horror. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you can tell it's that kind of night for me now. I just <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. I'm, I'm I'm off on leave all week, so yeah, my mind's just completely. Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I finish cool. I finish work on Friday. I start a new job in three weeks, but oh nice. Yeah, nice, nice. after Florida. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah, Mitch Hall is asking. This is talking about the Assassin's Creed movie. They've just shown the new Assassin's Creed movie trailer. Um, and yeah, he would like I to know. It. Yeah, it looks awesome with. Uh, I've forgotten his name as well now. <laughs> Michael Fassbender. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if they made one for Black Flag, would you be interested in reprising your role as Edward Kenway for the Silver Screen? Yeah, Square? man, that would be awesome. I was going to swear that. That, was fucking <laughs> awesome. that would be so cool. I love the Assassin's Creed. I'm still playing the game, actually. Yeah. And uh, uh, I actually, uh, I'm going to play it. Actually, I've got it all in the computer ready to go. Um, <laughs> I played it. I played it on a, on a console that I had before mm-hmm. uh, when it first came out. But then none of the the the, the, the I bought a new console, got the PS4, and um, and I've been playing it on that. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't I haven't completed it. Obviously, I know what what, what happens, but I haven't <laughs> completed it yet. But right. It, it's, uh, but I I just love kind of sailing around in the scenery and stuff. And and Edward McKenna is badass, and uh, yeah, that would be awesome. It's actually on my list. I've got it on my on my PS4. I've got it saved because I'm currently. Uh, I've had it there, and have, then I was about to start playing that, and then they brought Uncharted Four out because I've only just got a PS4 recently. So yeah, so I, I just, put that I just, on. I just got Unch- Uncharted Four as well. Oh, it's awesome that one. Um, yeah, it's good. It's, it's kind of similar to Assassin's Creed in a way. What's funny is because I'm used to the way that Assassin's Creed is free you roam and you can take mm-hmm. on missions. It's slight, slight, the gameplay being slightly different. Yeah, and you know it is. It is more the storyline, and I like to play the storyline on things, you know. But uh, you know the. the the gameplay is, is more rigid. You can't just free roll. And that's what I love about the Assassin's Creed games is you can just do, you know, you can choose to go on the main storyline or take side missions or just, you know, walk around. And, and yeah, definitely. That's what, I, that's what I love about it. You know, it's, a, it's, it's a great game. It, it is, yeah. You know, those guys did such a, an amazing job at it and I was so lucky. I know I didn't really realise at the time what, 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 what I was getting into, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I did my research on it, but, you know, you do something and then, and then when when the game came out, it's like if I could tell my te- my twelve year old self that you know <laughs> I, I I would be playing a game with me in it when I was when I was that age, I would have gone crazy, man. It's like <laughs> such a cool thing, you know. It's like I completely geek out about it sometimes. You know? And I've got a little Edward Kenway statue, you know, like <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's cool, man. Yeah, awesome. Well, it is it's you know I mean you know you, you can't go wrong with that, can you? I mean I say I not play Black Flag, I play some of the other ones, and I I do love that. Yeah, the open world where you can just go and do whatever you want. So I can't wait to yeah. play it. Yeah. I've just cool. I've got my OCD that I've got to complete the other one first. <laughs> oh, have you? I, I jump between games, you know. I just got Doom as well. Oh, and, uh, uh, yeah, What's funny is my, my housemate and one of my best friends, Al Weaver, was actually in Doom. All oh, right, cool. You know, with The Rock. It was <laughs> oh, yeah. funny. So I was like, I was telling him, he was like, you, you watch the, it's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> You see, it must be such an awesome place being in that silent world where it's like, oh yeah, you got mates are in the. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool. You're like, you know, you 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 switch on the TV or like, you know, you go to see a movie and you're like, you know, you see someone up there doing their thing and you you know you uh, feel really proud of them and it's uh, it's a great thing. <laughs> I've got to say, I mean, after my, I mean, just on a, um, a much minimal minimal level i am um, after i've been doing these interviews for a while and sort of chatting to you guys and getting sort of getting to know you on the phone and whatever if I, i'll sit there now my wife will just go oh she'll just start groaning because i'll just sit and watch something and i like to see you in it or i'll see someone else i've spoken to it's like oh look look there they are there they are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and i'll sit there and i'll take more you know i'll, t- I'll, I'll appreciate more of it then because I, I can work out after you know um the nuances and Stuff like that, but yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh, cool. Man. <laughs> okay, Matt Ryan. Uh, moving on to sort of more uh, Constantine type related questions now. I've got the first one is from Matt Ryan Daily Twitter account. Right. And Dan- oh yeah, yeah. And- they have that website, don't they? They're, yeah, yeah. They do, they run a they run a fan what's site. What's the what's name? Matt Ryan Daily. Yeah, but what's the? What's oh, I don't the know name the website. Your... I don't know. I don't know the name of the lady girl who does it. Oh, oh yeah, no. I, I, yeah, um, she does it. Does a great job on that website. Yeah, yeah, let me just make sure, see if I've got anything from here. I can't find it. No, I can't think of the person. Sorry, sorry, Matt Ryan Daily. I apologise. 
<laughs> but yeah, they've done, they've done a website for you. And also Danny Puta. Danny is, I think she's originally from Colombia. She lives in the States. And she, oh, wow. Yeah, when I told her I'd be asking her questions, she cried, I think, because she was just so excited. Oh, bless you, Danny. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to give a shout out to Danny, you can. She's Hi, Danny. <laughs> cool, thank you. Shout um, out to Danny. Yeah, I mean, this question is more Constantine related, but Carissa is also expanding that question. So, if you didn't do Constantine, could choose to play anyone in the Marvel Universe, who would you play? Um, uh, but what, one of the bad guys or something mm-hmm. uh, would, be, would be cool, yeah. And like a Thanos uh, in, 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 in the universe. Marvel Universe. Yeah, in the Marvel Universe. Oh, well, even in DC, try. You know, any, oh, well, universe, like any... Any, any other comic book yeah. character. Yeah. I don't know. That's almost like like you know, well, who's your favorite comic book character? Well, it is like, kind of. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would say like probably Batman or something. Because <laughs> he's just like because he's you know he doesn't have any you know superhuman strength or anything. That's why I love Constantine so much as well because he's a human being. You know, yeah, he's yeah. kind of like Constantine, is, you know, uh, you know anti hero, but uh, you know Batman in that sense because he's you know he's a, he's a human. But then you know Superman does fly. True. <laughs> yeah. True, but Batman's a good choice. Batman just kicks ass wherever he goes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Carissa actually expanded that one slightly. Uh, I've put the two together in a little way. She's expanded it to any character in any type of movie or TV show. Who would you play and why? So not just a com- comic character, but any any character in anything. Um, That's a tough one, I isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I don't know. Uh, I probably I I can't think of any character out there at the moment that uh, because when someone's already play when someone's already playing the role, you love and respect them. You know, you, you yeah. love them for playing the role. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like you, you want to do it. But like in terms of types of roles, then I would say like. Uh, anything that's kind of like really far removed from myself, someone who really has uh, kind of uh, some, you know, uh, a, a, a life-changing event within within his storyline, someone who's going through something uh, that, that ultimately changes him. I think those t- kinds of conflicts and those kinds of uh, the big shifts of people are, so, are something that interests me as, a, as an actor and kind of... Um, with characters, you know, it's uh, mm-hmm. what 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 are the what are the life changing events they go for go through, and uh, and then you get to explore those and kind of you know uh, look into them and and, uh, and and learn learn a lot of the psychology of them. Yeah, now that's fair enough. I'm going to throw this one in as well because I, I, it kind of borders on what you just said. It, you know, take any movie because you respect the people who are doing it at the time. What do you think of all these remakes? Um, I'm naming a couple, but I'm not specifically. Obviously, there's so many. I mean, like Ghostbusters or lately the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You don't have to answer if you don't. I'm just I'm not looking for a right or wrong. I'm just saying, how do you feel about those kind of things? I mean, they were classics, and you you, you respect the people in them in the beginning. Obviously, you respect the guys who are doing it now. But how do you feel about those kinds of remakes? Um, S- say no comment I, if I'm, you don't want. To. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kind of impartial in a way. Uh, or I'll say no comment then. <laughs> cool. Fair uh, enough. <laughs> No, no, I know what you mean. It's like, I mean, I'm all, you know, I'm in two minds myself because sometimes it's good to see a refresh and, you know, see it being done differently and how it can be done with all the technologies of today with a slightly different I think that, take on I, th- it. I think that if something's, you know, I think if something's got an audience, you know, and, uh, and you know, that there's a story that's, you know, want the, you know people want to tell again and uh, then, then that's fine. I don't kind of have any... Uh, judgments on kind of them doing it. Sometimes I think that you know some things are best left alone, you know, and you don't need to mm-hmm. do it. I think depending on on the thing, but then also you know the, there are chances to kind of do something slightly differently, or you know with different actors will bring something different to it, and and that can be a good thing. So I think it's kind of project specific, really. Cool, no worries. So, yeah, sorry about that. I just thought I'd throw that in because we've it's going to be kind of touched on. It just threw in my mind. Back, That's right. back to Constantine. <laughs> James Lloyd. This is a bit of a dodgy one. This is, I apologise to everyone from Liverpool on this question because it's. <laughs> did you rob the helmet of Naboo like a proper scouser? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> I, I took a couple of um, uh, crystals before from uh, from the you know the uh, the mill house, but yeah. no, I didn't rob the helmet. <laughs> John would have. Yeah, John would have. I think. <laughs> Was well, a pretty cool question. I like that one. 
Okay, California Dreaming. Do you have a favourite line from Constantine? Because she's always wanted to know. California Dreaming. <coughs> California Dreaming. Oh, no, yeah. uh, I know. Uh, I'm all night now. A favourite line, favorite line from Constantine. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know, I, I like the voice too, but, you know, uh, that, 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 that I did when, you know, walking down the tunnel. And what's funny mm-hmm. is, like, that, that, that shot of me walking down the tunnel was actually a scene from the pilot. Right. A whole scene, which was cut. Because the, the, the pilot, for, well, for whatever reason, the pilot was too, too long, whatever. But there was a whole scene of me uh, going to this place, and that was, and they used it with a, and put the voiceover over it, you know, and that voiceover yeah. is from, from one of the comics. Uh, I can't remember it off heart, but that's probably, yeah, you know, that's, what is it? I, you know, I'll, I'll, he walks down the thing and he says, yeah. like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kick him the bollocks and, you know, and give him a nod and a wink or something like that. And it's yeah. just like, it's, it's, it's great. I really love that. that. Uh, okay. I'm trying to remember that line myself now. Is I'll take the demon, kick it, screw in a bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> Some, yeah, yeah, no, that's cool, awesome. There you go, California Dreamer. Thanks. Okay, Kim Beecham again. Um, she's asking a Constantine one, and Lexi has also asked this. What were your favourite memories from working on Constantine? Favourite memories from working on Constantine: going into the makeup trailer every morning and meeting the guys in the makeup trailer who are amazing, <clears throat> amazing makeup artists. Uh, uh, Jay and, and all of that team. It's it's such an important place, you know, when you get to when you get to base in the morning and, and uh, you know the way that those guys are, the energy that they have, and they give you, you know, before your day as you kind of sitting around and uh, you know getting getting prepared is 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 uh, really integral to kind of how you go on to set that day, I think. And uh, and those guys are great, and those are probably some of my fondest memories. All right, cool, awesome. No, I mean, um, everyone I've spoken to, I mean, when I spoke to you before, when you gatecrashed John Joe's interview, <laughs> and uh, <it> was, <laughs> that was hilarious. But everyone, and all, everyone seems to be the same, say the same sort of thing about Constantine. It seems to have been a very special set um, with everybody, cast and crew. It was just one big, huge family. So, yeah, it was. It was great. Cool. Roz, Roz is asking, do you think Zed has been guided by John or sent by John's mother to save him? Uh, oh, I don't know. Interesting plot point. I don't know. You should, if if we had carried on, that's something we should have should written to the writer about. But um, I don't think that, that that's that's why she's in there. Uh, or that's certainly nothing that I've, I've thought about. But it's an interesting twist. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, the next question, the questions, I've bunched together again. So I'm going to rattle off the names. So apologies to everyone. It's Butchie two three one, Corey Stevens. Bell Gaudreau, Matthew Davis, Robert Chopstick, Perk Edge, and Danny Puta again. So they all they all asked the same questions, which was, is Constantine? I mean, I've spoke to you before, and I know what this answer is. Is it a role that you would be interested in playing again if the opportunity presented itself? As in, would there be possibly crossovers with maybe Lucifer Preacher or other CW shows? Oh wow! Well, I, I have no idea about any of those things, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I can say that. You know, some characters you play, in, and when you when when you when you finish them, like in a play or a TV show, you you kind of you know you put them to bed and you're done with them and stuff. And and uh, but but John is a character; it's such uh, uh, an amazing three dimensional you know character to play. That uh, <laughs> yeah, he's someone that I would be interested in exploring again. Awesome to hear. Great to hear. Okay, Kapuka. <laughs> I know. I'll. I'll tongue twisting names some of these would you as Matt Ryan get on with John Constantine yeah I think I would you know I, I, I probably want to sit him down and kind of you know talk to him about his his past and uh, mm-hmm. try and get him to you know open up but you know he's probably someone who's seen a lot more shit in life than me and uh, but uh, yeah no he's, he's an arrogant bastard so I don't <laughs> think that uh, we would probably get on that well but uh, uh, and, uh, yeah. he's kind of one of those people I think you'd, you'd, you'd like to know but yeah, you'd love to not, hate. yeah, you'd love to hate. Yeah, he can, he can be useful. You know, he's, yeah. got lot, he's got he's got skills. You know, he can be useful. But uh, yeah. Yeah, as far as a friend is concerned, I wouldn't really trust him. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> From Matthew Davis, but it was um, it's, I don't think he's one you'd be able to answer. Is is there any truth that DC are trying to bring back Constantine? Because that's just oh, that seems to be something that's been going on for such a long time. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have I have I have no idea. You know, I'm looking for something at the moment. And, I have, I have no idea. I think they're very busy with uh, everything else they're doing, probably. You know. Yep, fair enough. Cool. Okay, so TJ, um, this has been a big debate, but which hashtag should we use for the continued support of Constantine? There's three different ones. You've got Constantine Lives, Bring Back Constantine, or Save Constantine. 
I don't know, man. Uh, what's 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 the most popular at the moment? I've got no idea. I think people are just looking for it. <laughs> I, th- to... I think I think that uh, the most whatever the most popular at the moment. I think yes. If, if the guys. Uh, uh, I think Bring Back Constantine is probably a good one, isn't it? Because Save Constantine, I mean, obviously the show's cancelled, so it's... Yeah, bring Back Constantine, I'll, I would personally would say, but again, it's whichever okay. one I guess is the most popular. As you say. <laughs> okay, Miami, she is out in... Oh, God, is, I think it's China. Or it could be Japan, I'm sorry. Oh, what? Miami. Really? Uh, yeah, Miami. She's, Miami. Um, if you could direct one episode of Constantine, which one and why? Um, it probably would have been, uh, uh, I don't know because, you know, the different directors who directed them, uh, brought something to them in terms of like, what script would I, what would I have wanted to direct? Um, maybe, I mean, my fav one of my favorite episodes was episode nine. So maybe that one, uh, you know, because, it, but, uh, it was, I really liked the script of that one and enjoyed the episode, but, uh, maybe nine or 13. All right, cool. Yeah. Why 13? Because uh, <laughs> it was the last one we shot. Yeah, fair. Cool, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, this next one's come from Danny Puta again. Uh, obviously, see, uh, the names are repetitive somewhere because they ask different questions and different things. Zoe also asked this one. How would you feel about Zatanna? Or how do you feel about Zatanna? Me as a person, or, or what, what, I, I think as a, I think it's looking at it as a character. Or? I think looking at it as a character. I mean, the, yeah, it's uh, an it's open to interpretation. But I'll, I'll say, as a character, how would you feel about Zatanna? Obviously, if Constantine had continued, maybe obviously maybe brought her in from the comics and stuff, possibly. Yeah, I don't. I think that uh, the, the great thing about about uh, the, you know the how there's a comics is there's so many great and um, and the Constantine comics is there's so many uh, great characters that. That you know you can you can utilize and come across, and uh, that's what makes it kind of such a great comic, you know, and why people love it so much. Yep, no worries, fair enough. Uh, I think you are right. So there's so much in there that can be done. Yeah, definitely. No, definitely. Okay, so this is a strange one from uh, IRMNR. Based in Turkey, I can't pronounce the thing. Ir- Irmna in Turkey is. Were the incantations in Constantine real or were they made up? Um, they were real. They were. They actually had. Um, Excuse me. I mean, yep. uh, they, they actually had a uh, uh, an exorcist, a real exorcist kind of advisor. All right. And uh, you know, at, at every point possible, they, uh, we we try to make everything as kind of real as possible. And uh, you know, it's difficult sometimes speaking so many different languages. Uh, it, you know. Uh, but, uh, so um, so complex kind mm-hmm. of sentences and stuff. But we used I used to have like experts that would come in and and, and help me with with them. But often you know it was uh, sometimes something might 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 have gone lost, or they might not be the correct pronunciation or things like that. But no, we did try uh, try to make it as real as possible. All right, awesome. That's good to hear. <laughs> Kind of goes in with Dave Blass is um, making sure that that set had every single little bit of it was perfect. Yeah, well. he's so, yeah. amazing, man. He is just amazing, that guy. <laughs> and the attention to detail that he has is fantastic. Yeah, it is. I can't wait to watch Preacher because I know he's been on that as well. So, I'll, you know, yeah. seeing what he did yeah. with you guys, see what he does, does with everything else. But yeah, he has got an amazing attention to detail for everything. Okay, moving on to the last Constantine question. This is from Dana Robinson. How far into the series did you read? Daniel made episode 14 available last year, but he also last year he and Dave Blass tweeted out a, and Dave Blass again tweeted a picture of some binders labelled with episode numbers which were up to number 16. Um, I didn't read them, and I haven't read them because, uh, uh, you know, I feel like there's... Uh, I, I don't know, I think I'd be slightly... Sad if I read if I read them. I know Daniel released one online, yeah, which is yeah. cool. But no, I, I I I knew I kind of knew where we were going, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, they ever was Daniel was good. Daniel, they were great about that, and uh, uh, but I didn't actually read those episodes. All right, cool, no worries. Dana also wonders if you still have the pick she gave you at Tampa Comic Con last year. <laughs> can no you what? remember that? Her, she said she can, a pick. I don't know if it's a, she says pick, but I don't know if it's a pick or a pin. She gave it Tampa oh, Conic Con last year. I do have a pin, yes. <laughs> there you but, go. Uh, uh, but I have a couple of pins. <laughs> I have a pin of, pin of a guitar, a pin with a motorbike on it, and yep. another pin. Yeah, but I do, yeah. There's a very strong possibility that I do. Awesome. 
In the same vein, Kim Beecham has just asked me as well. Apologies, this just came through here, Matt. Uh, so I'm going to put you on the spot. She would like to know if you put the Constantine dragon she bought you at Wales Comic Con on your mantelpiece like you said you would. <laughs> I, I do, yes. I do. I have like, I have like, a, I have like two, I have a picture, a little picture of Edward Kenway and a, a little picture of, Con, a little picture of Constantine from his drawn and then a couple of things like, uh, like I've got the, uh, um, the little, what, what are those, the, the little doll things yeah, that you call? Action what, figure type thing, is it? No, no, no it's, uh, no, oh, the, the, the big heads and the small bodies. Yeah, I can't remember the name. I know what they are, but I know exactly. I've got what one mean. of those. Somebody made me a quantity one. I've got one of those. I'm that one. Up there. Yeah. So awesome. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. So, cheers, Matt, uh, for your time. Anything quickly you want to say to fans? Obviously, I'll... Uh, just just thank you all very much for uh, for all your support uh, that that you've given and the love that you love. Um, some of the work I've been doing, and I and I hope to kind of uh, continue working and doing things that you like. Thank you. Okay, awesome, and hopefully we'll have a part two shortly to discuss Therese Rackett and Halcyon. Ah, oh, Matt, thank you very much once again. That was absolutely fantastic. Ah, oh, and brilliant to talk to you. Um, glad, thank you for answering all the Hellblazers fans who sent them in. Thank you to you Hellblazers for sending your questions in and being so positive, sharing and retweeting and being so active and supporting Matt. Wish Matt all the best with his future career. We're watching it very, very closely, as I'm sure all of you guys will be. I hope you enjoyed that. This has been Chris Gordon. You've been listening to Ramblings of a Hellblazer. Good night.